everybody. That was fun. So I, we played it twice. <laughs> It was dedicated to Nina Brule, who's our special guest tonight, um, all about the Trump women. Uh, you've written a book about the Trump women, and we're, we've been poring over it, and we're going to compare notes throughout the show. How are you doing tonight, Nina? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Pretty good. It's good to be with you tonight. Uh, what a day, LB and Greg Oliar are here. I mean, this is like a year's worth of news in a single day today, and it still keeps going. I don't know what's going to happen. We're still expecting Trump's live <laughs> medical in just a few minutes. I expect he's going to have his live medical on Fox News because that's how we do things these days. Um, let me let me ask uh, LB first or, or Greg, whichever of you want to pile in here first. I'm curious about your uh, sobering thoughts for this Friday night. Greg. Greg. <laughs> I'll go first. I... When I uh, had a job in my early 20s, the guys there played a game called the Deadpool where they picked famous people that they thought would die and you were awarded points oh. based on how old. It was really morbid and awful and I did not participate. But that's what this feels like right now. I I'm not going to lie. It's just really weird and I don't like it. But we're all sitting here looking at what's going to happen statistically like is trump well is he not well is he going to die and if he's going to die when is pence well why is he coming back from D to dc why is pelosi suddenly talking about the 25th amendment all of this stuff it's 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 creepy and it's morbid but that's where we're at right now the, we have to define the, the well as well i mean is he yeah. well mentally is just well physically we just don't no, know he's clearly right. not well mentally because he's on the 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 steroids and he's right. not well mentally to begin with so but eventually you take those steroids and what happens is they suppress your immune system and i'm not a medical doctor but i think if you're trying to fight off a deadly disease having a functional immune system is probably something that you want i don't know I mean, they only really give you that Regeneron, which he's been advertising everywhere as a cure, which, but it's not, if you have no functioning immune response. I mean, that's what they'd give you, and you don't have one. So we know he doesn't have a, a functioning immune response. So he's basically- If he's even, I mean, but if he's even taking these medicines, like who even knows? Who even knows? I don't trust, that doctor looks so much like Dr. Nick Riviera from The Simpsons that it's actually funny. <laughs> Dr. Nick has more facial hair. That's the only difference. It's I just, really, it's- I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's sick. We don't know. We just. I mean, he looks yeah. sick. He sounds sick, but he's I. Sick. He's sick. Yeah. I, I believe that. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I, I, he's where's not, the test? No negative test. No positive test. No tests. I don't tests. think he was testing. I don't think he was testing. Hi, no, everybody. He wasn't. Um, I don't think he's been testing. He doesn't. He's not going to do something uncomfortable, for himself when he can just have everyone around him test. And this is. Uh. It's always the simplest explanation with this president. Just, it is. It's always the simplest, scariest explanation too. It, Nina, yeah. you, what did you think was the, what was your week like, or your perception of Trump's week as, as you were looking at it this week? Well, I think the afternoon today, really, the Times, uh, the Times dump, the tax stories today in the afternoon, mm -hmm. um, really kind of put the icing on the cake. I, I get it that the 25th Amendment and Pelosi and, and Trump on dexamethasone or whatever you call it is, is, um, is, is going to, um, it's going to blow up. But um, the revelations in that piece today, the, the, the dump uh, this afternoon, I guess they were holding back while he was sick. But, you know, mm -hmm. Phil Ruffin paid mm -hmm. the Trump U settlement and Phil Ruffin you know, somebody through Phil Ruffin's company sent him 16 or $20 million in the 16 campaign to tide him over. And, you know, I've always thought Phil Ruffin is, we don't, we pay so much attention to Sheldon Adelson, right. but we don't pay enough attention to Phil Ruffin. Phil Ruffin with the, you know, the little Uncle Fester with the, with the Natasha girlfriend that he, or what, wife, the Miss what? Ukraine. I mean, he's just a Trump, he's as Trumpy as you can get. And he's, He's just, I don't know. I think that in, in this, this is how they would do it. You know, it wouldn't be done through Deutsche Bank. It would go through Vegas, right. you know? That's and then the fact that they're putting the a monsters. bullet train, that he's putting a bullet train from LA to, to Vegas when we can't even get a train down to Washington that mm. goes more than, that takes less than four hours. Sorry, don't get me started. No, you're, we're hoping you're getting started because we like that around here. You know, what shocked me yesterday is in the midst of our of a governor of, of Michigan being, uh, you know, attempted to, an attempted to abduct her and oh, yeah. possibly kill her. 
the president of the United States is, is out there asking her why she's not thanking him and not again denouncing white supremacism and these guys who are who are plotting against a sitting governor of the of the United States. I mean, it's we've jumped the shark so many times. There is no, you know, we're, there's just no shark at all. It's just I, I don't know what what we're going to do next um, to to what he could do next. Except it does worry me that this that part of it, the white supremacist militia, call it what you will, part of it is still ongoing. You know, he's still got. It seems like he's on his way out and he's exiting somehow, but he's still got these crazy people out there that are plotting to take over states, uh, overthrow governments, and and who knows what else. Right. Women too. And, we, yeah. I think it's it, it's it has to be pointed out yeah. and should be that it's a woman governor of Michigan. Yeah. Because if it was a man, would they still be doing that? Maybe, but I don't think so. I think yeah. I think the misogyny the, is just as point. horrible as the white supremacy. Yeah, it for sure I did is. a little. Fireside chat about that this morning at like 3 a.m. when I was awake. So, um, is there another fly appearance I wasn't aware of? No, I wasn't in a fly. <laughs> the fly suit was fantastic. <laughs> I, I wish I had a chef to pose for the show. <laughs> In case everyone missed it, well, so like yesterday morning, you were out there in a midnight or 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., I don't know when you were up, in a fly costume because of Pence's fly, right. I suspect. Well, I have, a, I have someone who monitors me from New York of mm -hmm. when he sees me online way too early in the morning, and he happens to be here with me on the panel, <laughs> and I get a text, go to bed, what are you doing awake? Right. And so I got, so he saw me and instead of that lecture a um, couple of mornings ago, he said, or two more, yeah, le yesterday morning, holy crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what day it is. Um, Greg says, hey, I'm, you know, you want to call? Because he could see I was up, I'm on my walk. And so instead of calling him back, I, I went downstairs and I turned off the alarm, went downstairs into the garage because I had just seen all the Halloween costumes and uh, grabbed this fly costume. That's this old costume that I just, you know, I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm a, I'm a good wasp. Like everything, all my holidays are packaged up and stored forever in the garage. And I pull them out every year <laughs> and put the head on and sent that back to, to Greg. And he's like, and I said, I'm considering doing a little fireside chat. And this, he said, oh, you have to do it. And so that's how that <laughs> happened. I mean, it's, it was spectacular, a little creepy at first, but I was like, hell, you know, it's perfect. It was, for, <laughs> it was very calming and creepy at the same time, which is a, which is a hard balance to get actually. So, so it's only you funny if that. you don't acknowledge that you're in a fly costume at all yeah. or why <laughs> right. that's, that's the comedy. It didn't even occurred to me to acknowledge it. I, and cause I just had, I had a lot to say in the early morning oh my goodness. and, um, anyway, but it's, it's like, okay, well, I don't know where to go from here. I just put on a fly costume and. Like, where are we going? I don't know where we're going from here. But yeah. back to the Whitmer thing and that, I always say Whitmore, Whitmer. It's hard for me to say her name for some reason. And uh, what you brought up about the white supremacists, I want to mark what the AG said in, uh, was it the district attorney or the AG in? Um, Senate governor, maybe? In Michigan, I think. Yeah. She said, this is a tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. of what the FBI has uncovered and what's going on. So we are going to hear about a lot of this, and I think we should just all be really grateful that our FBI is really, really good oh, yeah. at what they do. And I think we are. They really I, are on this. That yeah. means there's tons of these plots. You know, there's probably yeah. little cells operating everywhere in this country, where planning to do you know crazy stuff, and and not necessarily able. No, no, they're not necessarily stoppable because they're so programmed. They're brainwashed into this. It's not like they're That's right. they're thinking it's logically like about it. Yeah. I always think of it as it's the same as the school shooters, right? Same, the sort of radicalization and all this that's been happening for a long time and people aren't willing to connect these dots, but they're right there if you understand where these channels and forums are. Um, but it's like pulling pins out of grenades, just boom, 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 boom. We don't know uh, where they're going to go off, but we can, we can trust our FBI. We can. Yes, for sure. I mean, it's an amazing plot that they were able to to foil. Um, Nina, what do you think about uh, Donald Trump's exit? Do you think he's going to exit peacefully? Do you think he this is all just to him uh, putting up a big front that he's not going to? Or do you think that he's actually going to put up a real fight on the way out? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't, um, I, I mean, I'm, my guess would be that he would put up a big fight. I mean, he's not... He's not someone who's given in very easily, but then again, he's sick now. And um, 
and I, I think he hasn't quite it hasn't co quite caught up with him, but maybe this week it did. Uh, if they try to trot him out to this law and order rally tomorrow uh, and he faints or something, I mean, I think that we're minutes away from having something like that happen mm -hmm. uh, because nobody will tell him to stay in or stay home or sit down and um, he's sick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the answer is, I don't know. I think that he, if, you know, uh, under normal D Donald Trump uh, circumstances, he probably would, you know, employ and the Republicans too, and the donor, the donor class of the Republicans. They're going to run those lawyers as hard as they can in the states where they can make, they think they can make headway. I mean, if it's close, they will go to the mat. They're already sitting out there waiting. Mm -hmm. We know that. Yeah. It's amazing that even uh, McConnell is, seems to be putting some distance between himself and, and Trump just to win his own seat, I presume. But he has been putting some distance in the last couple of days. I but just had a revelation. Office, yeah, though. go ahead, Greg. Oh, oh no, no. It's, it's stupid. But no, Nina, oh. when you were saying that, it occurs to me about going to the rally. We are now living in Pink Floyd the Wall. And Trump is now pink and they're trying, they're going to have to drug him up to go to the show. And there's Nazis and there's daddy mm. issues and it ends with the wall, right? It's the wall mm -hmm. and the wall breaks down and then everybody's fine. So there, that's it. Wow. I, yeah. I, I haven't seen, and, I, haven't, I haven't seen the wall yet. So I should see it is what you're saying. Or, or I mean, it just, just came out the... last, you don't need to see it. Oh, yeah. But, but it's the, the music. you can listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. He but, just wow. encapsulated it. Um, yeah. That's it. It's comfortably numb. Trump has become comfortably numb. Okay. The book is called Moving The Trump on. Women. Women. And uh, part of the deal is what you've titled it. It's not the second time we've seen this uh, book in, in, in print, really, because it's uh, it was previously titled something else. But you've uh, added to it or uh, amended it, I believe, or is it just the, basically the same thing? I just uh, I just updated. You know, I, I updated. I rewrote the prologue and I updated um, here and there. But it's basically the same book um, as the hardcover. It's just out in paperback under a new title. Um, Golden Handcuffs, The Secret History of Trump's Women um, was not a title that I came up with. I thought it was hilarious, but I think that they decided it was, people weren't getting it. It was too S&M sounding. So <laughs> they switched to a more sedate looking cover. Um, I mean, now that you I mentioned it. Them well. uh, so this is the, this is the, you know, um, the more sedate version of the marketing program for this book, but it's, it's the same story um and there is um you know there's much to discuss about it i mean there you know his his family the women in his family are immigrants um and they are um uh you know elvana and and melania are um you know eastern european uh they melania arrives here during a period of um lots and lots and lots of Eastern European women coming over here, fully commodified. Ivana arrived here um, from the Czech Repu well, Czechoslovakia in the 60s, uh, late 60s. Um, my sources in Prague don't understand how she was able to get out if That's she didn't right. have special, special access and special. And, you know, if you look, people don't pay much attention to her, Ivana, even though she, mm. she's the mother of his children, partly because you know, we're all going along with, you know, he can't be photographed with somebody his own age. A woman his own age cannot be in the same frame with him. She's like his Dorian Gray. Right. But she <laughs> was a beauty. She was a sylph and, uh, you know, this lissom blonde. And she comes over here and she lands this, this, this uh, you know, Queens boy with, who's on the up in Manhattan. And she habituated him to the Slavic world. He would have never gone to Russia in 87 had he not been with this collective educated, collectivist educated uh, Russian speaking woman. So, uh, you know, much, I mean, maybe, maybe future historians will pick it apart. The, uh, the, the, the files on her, the secret police files on her in Czech Republic have mysteriously disappeared from wherever they were supposed to be. Um, we're going to go back to her. I'm going to stop you for there because I want to go back to her in a second. And I want to do this chronologically because I think it's really I interesting about as them. you go through um, all these women and, and you talk about her grandmother at the, at the start, but then there's also the mother. There's lots of Marys and Mary Anns in this, uh, in the world mm -hmm. of the Trump. So, so if you see a lot of that name floating around, you know why, but um, also an immigrant from Scotland. And I think to everyone's surprise, at least my surprise, she's not, she was not um, wealthy at all. She was just a, a relatively poor immigrant. 
No, oh, she was the 10th child of a, of a fisherman's family. Um, and she came from the Isle of Lewis, which is closer to Iceland than London. Um, Donald likes to say that his mother was on holiday when she came here. Nothing could be further from the truth. In, the, in those years, in the 20s, the great families of New York liked to have um, household help from the British Isles. And her older yeah. sisters had already come over here and were working with, and in fact, married to the butlers and from the UK or, you know, the British butlers and, and Scottish maids and, and cooks and chefs. And, um, and Marianne McLeod was her name, arrives here uh, at the age of 17, probably has an eighth grade education. And her first residence was in the Carnegie household, Carnegie, yeah. Andrew Carnegie's widow, the wealthiest family in the country, one of the wealthiest families in the country. Uh, and she was part of a retinue of 20 servants, butlers, maids, even footmen. She even had footmen, Louise yeah. Carnegie. And so yeah. his mother had this, um, I think, obsession. I mean, he's written about it. She was obsessed with the royals and she was um, exposed at a pretty impressionable age to this Amer the closest thing that America has had to royalty inside the house, you know, polishing the banister in this, in this mansion. And she passed down whole to Donald, his, his taste for guilt and lux and, um, and, you know, the gilded tea and the coat of arms, the fake coat of arms down in, down in, you know, th this need to be, to be to appear to be part of to be of that class mm -hmm. and um right. you know so that's kind of the rosebud of him i think yeah i think you're so right and just to hit on those two notes that come with that are sort of a sycophancy right of having yeah, absolutely this piece, it, uh, feeling better about yourself because you're surrounding yourself with wealthy powerful celebrity all that stuff that we know from all the people who knew Donald and know him still, that he just hungers for um, celebrities to, to, to fit in, hungers for other big wealthy developers to fit in. We'll do anything to just be accepted by that um, and have that be the reflection for him. So that's and yet he's come to power as a populist leader and a guy and who's, a, who's, you know, going to drain the swamp and, you know, he's not he at all what he says. He has contempt for his followers. Yeah, he has mm. contempt for them. Everybody that's around him knows he has. Look at what we just learned out of the uh, uh, Olivia, right? Uh, you know, he said that I don't have to shake the hands of those disgusting people with the COVID. So, yeah, um, since COVID's out there. So, you know, in the greatest is, irony of the he world, is. he is one of those disgusting people. So, now he, <laughs> he is. He came. Well, contempt. Came. They're climbers, they're social contempt. climbers, the Trumps. You know, constantly. yeah, contempt for your con contempt for your public is is a um, for the people really is a, um, a, a a facet or an attribute of the um, authoritarian of the dictator. Mm. I'm reading this. I'm actually reviewing Ruth yeah. Ben Giat's book Strong Men. I don't know if you've had her on or, or familiar yeah. with her. I, I'm reviewing it this weekend. I just oh, read great. it today, and that's one of the things. You know, there's so many so many similarities between Mussolini, Hitler. Um, Mobutu, uh, Berlusconi, Putin, and, and Trump, Orban. I mean, there are, are so many similarities. It's a playbook almost. And one of the one of their one of the aspects is just, is a loathing for your people. And that's that's why he could that's why he could go out tear gassing, uh, you know, in Washington, peaceful protesters just for a photo op. Mm -hmm. They all seem to have it. I was watching Donald Trump Jr. at an at a, a indoor event yesterday. I was like, how do you, how are you hosting an indoor rally two days after your father just came out of hospital for um, coronavirus? And you've got like, you know, a hundred people in an indoor um, room. It wasn't that busy, but it was busy enough. And there's certainly no masks or social distancing. It blows me away, the, the lack of respect they have. Mm -hmm. And this continued, you know, farce that they'll put on until the until God knows what, until, uh, you know, they'll just keep doing it uh, and they'll pretend that nothing's going on. They'll just pretend nothing is going on and, uh, and that he's healthy and he's clearly not. I just, it blows me away. Um, so after that came I Ivana, right? That would be the next yes. woman in life who, who shaped his, his thinking. Now she's really interesting yes. to me. 
Because LB actually told me once that uh, I didn't know this much about it, uh, about Ivana until you told me that she really was the big reason his casinos sort of blew up um, and did so well, or did so well in, in their terms. They made a lot of money out of the casinos because she ran the casinos. She was good at it. Yeah, she was the only one that was good at it. <laughs> she was actually a good business um, you, you person. Know, yeah. She ended up being really good. And they he brought people from, not him per se, but the money behind him and the the men who were surrounding him and using those casinos for their for their business had brought their uh, some of their executives out of Vegas and placed them um, around Donald. And there was a in the casinos and there was a lot of uh, there started to be friction between Ivana and these men who were seasoned executives. But she did know what she was doing and it was difficult. She also ran his for a little bit of time that he had the plaza hotel. She was running that. So. Yeah, she started off you know, as, a, as the VP of uh, help, interior design. Apparently, that was her, and and she comes from um, Czechoslovakia, but um, a, a part of it that's pretty pretty remote. Apparently, yeah. So she comes from a, a shoe factory town, uh, the Bata Shoe oh, yeah. uh, Company. Which, and he's a he's an interesting cat, actually. Pre pre World War Two. Uh, he created, he was kind of like the Henry Ford of European shoemaking. And he had this, he, he had, and he was doing all sorts of experimental things. Corbusier was over there designing factories for him and factory housing. And it was a real working man's, working man and woman's town. And uh, mm -hmm. her parents worked for that company. Um, even after it was within the Soviet sphere, they still were making shoes there. And, um, she uh, she escaped it, mm. you know, through through her skiing ability, which if you go there, which I did, it's on this eastern edge of Czech Republic. Now, it used to be the center of Czechoslovakia, but now it's on the eastern edge of the Czech Republic up against Slovakia near uh, near Slovakia. And it's it's flat. Mm. It's like Illinois, where I grew up. In fact, it <laughs> reminded me a lot of Chicago, like kind of, you know, oh, wow potato eating people who aren't very stylish. And that's, that's how, that's where she grew up. Um, and she couldn't possibly have been a fantastic skier there. I mean, you, you see what you, we, you could see where it was and there was a little ski hill. Um, people, they did kind of go, the families would go into the nearby, there were sort of the, the foothills of the Carpathians and they would take their kids up there and hike up because it was they didn't have ski lifts or even ropes and they would ski and that's where she learned to ski and she she really wasn't that's not the only reason that she was getting out in and out of czech uh czechoslovakia when she was getting in and out of czechoslovakia Meaning. at least that's the opinion of that's the opinion of experts in the secret in the secret police I mean, she was a spy. In Prague. I mean, she was a spy, or at least on assignment. She was like a honey. She was a honeypot. I yeah. mean, I think a lot of these women could be. I mean, or they're, or they're at least they're people who who they're. Go, they're Nina. The go tell the somebody truth. Somebody could pick up the phone. Somebody could pick up the phone and ask her. You know what's going on with that that capitalist, or can you yeah. bring him over here? I mean, there maybe you That's know. That's right. It's it's not. It's it, they're not all like Bond girls. I mean, mm. Melania could be you know you could if if you had a line into melania and you were putin you could just you know, she maybe she'd pick up the phone and say you know what's he, how does he feel today i'm not saying putin picks up the phone i wouldn't sure, be surprised if, if he does if somebody they have a good relationship well, they have a really know. good relationship I have certainly not i certainly have no idea whether mm. she does or doesn't but i mean i'm just saying that these wives per, can per, can can uh perform uh work or you know be they, they perform a role you know ruffin's wife right that that you know nice yes. like, super hot ukraine miss ukraine i mean what are you doing with an 87 year old troll mm -hmm. i'm sorry and melania too you can those women can they're beautiful they can get mm. hot men mm. <laughs> right it is it, well, it's one of the reasons i wanted to do the show because i think you know people like to think of of trump as yeah. being the you know a, sort of moving into this role, maybe he was volunteering for it, maybe he sort of stepped into it because he really wanted it. And I'm not excusing anything because I do think he was a willing participant. But I also think these women 
were surrounding him at different times of his life or sent to him at different times of his life. I don't know which is the truth, but they're not just what they claim to be, which is just models or whatever. There, there may be honey pots and there may be honey traps, but he's a willing participant in those honey traps. But it's sort of, it's easy to gloss over them. It's easy to say that the women didn't, um, you know, they're, they're not guilty. Yeah, but they're not right. decorations. They're yeah. actively involved they're not decorations. In, in grooming a, a traitor. They're handling him. Mm -hmm. I'll handling say him. it. Handling they're handling him. him. Exactly. Um, now, the Phil Ruffin thing, we were getting that question. I was looking, who is Phil Ruffin? Who is Phil Ruffin? Because we haven't done a lot on him. And I think we should do a lot on him. I just want everyone to <laughs> go and look at the pictures of Donald Trump in Moscow for the Miss Universe pageant that's got all of that reporting around it. He was there with Phil Ruffin. Mm -hmm. Why is Phil Ruffin with him? On that Phil trip. Ruffin flew him over there for that oh, really? for that pageant. Mm -hmm. mm. That's right. On his it plane. was that plane. It was his plane. Mm -hmm. So, when we think about Ivana, she she came the over. She was a heart magnate. She was a she was a you know a sex pot as well. I mean, she was really gorgeous. She was wearing her you know she was a great skier. She was in good shape. And how did she uh, how did she come to take on uh, to to find him? How did they meet? Let me put it that way. Uh, well, the story is, and all of these stories are, are um, they're layers. So, you, you know, the story right. that they tell is that she met him at um, the great singles bar of the 70s. Um, and I'm blanking on it. It's not Max's Kansas City. That's the punk place. What is it called? Maxwell's. Anyway, she met him at this. Maxwell's. Maxwell's Plum. Maxwell's Plum. And she, she met him at Maxwell's Plum. She was down from Canada. She had made her way into Canada and she was down from Canada and had, uh, was modeling for um, an ad for the Olympics, I think. And she and her fellow models needed a, needed a table. And um, this guy kind of spotted them and sidled up to them and it was crowded and they couldn't get a table. And he had like the maroon three-piece suit on or something. And she just thought he was the bee's knees. <laughs> She got, he got her a table and then he took her home and his, in the, in the Cadillac that matched the color of the suit. And she just, you know, because all of the New York and he, you know, all the New York women, right. Recognized what he was, but she, she thought, you know, he's just the BMOC of Manhattan to a, to a Czech immigrant. And, um, so she, you know, there was perfect acolyte and, um, they got together now, um, and then they had the children. What year was and, that, Nina? You know, 1976, year? right? Like the Olympics were. 76? Uh, seven, yeah, 76, 77, something like that. And then, you know, okay. in 87, they go to Russia. By 89, he's off with, with uh, Marla. He's run off with, he's believing his own PR. He's written his, the the. I mean, he's had um, Tony Schwartz write his book. And, um, and now he's off to, he's about to crater actually into now, the you can't actually gloss over this, this trip clear. to russia because it's it's not exactly a common back then to have gotten a visa to oh. to go to leningrad or wherever it was they went and and tour the place in, in the way that they did i mean they were welcomed with open arms and and that is when the grooming sort of began apparently that's when the kgb was most interested or started their great interest in in him as a potential asset so she, well, they had their well, eyes on him for a while. They had and their Luke eyes Harding on him. Luke Harding writes about that too. Yeah. That's you know, right. Luke Harding writes about what was going on in New York with the UN and the the That's ambassador right. to the UN and other other Russian agents in New York. There, what, what well, she Gatan was doing was, was feeding back hotel, information about him to them. It was the That's daughter right. of the Russian ambassador who was sitting next to him at a party who invited him to go to Moscow. That's right. Like not some well, rando that he met on the subway. Like it right. was pretty. It's, yeah. it's an official invitation. That's right. And, and all of this it looked, seems a lot more set up to me. Him. Yeah. It, it, it they were all like over him. Yeah. It feels like it was constructed. It's like, yeah, it's like what uh, we've talked about before, Zev, of, you know, when you're the, when you become the target uh, for influence um, by something like the Kremlin, <laughs> um, especially back in the, in the 80s, right? Maybe even as early as the late 70s, uh, because they were already in our underworld. They were already sending their folks over to do business deals with our organized crime families. And that's why you ended up with someone like David Bogotan, who was a Russian intelligence officer as well as a gangster, um, buying the first condos in 1984, 1986, so early in Trump Tower. Um, so 
it's like it's I don't know if I've said this on the air before, but if you think if you remember Indiana Jones, the very first movie, Raiders of the Ark, Lost Ark, when they're going into the cave in the opening scene and he walks through this incredible spider web, right? And he just pushes it aside. And then you hear that, tick, 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 right? And you're like, oh my God, he's got spiders on him. And he looks at his back and he just brushes them off. And then there's Alfred Molina, I think, that's plays Lapido. And Lapido's eyes are like, ah. And, you know, Indiana just says, turn around. And just Lapido's frozen just in the, in the covered. Best oh, like, Lapido's <laughs> just covered with these spiders, right? His whole yeah. back just covered. That's what it's like. They're just going to cover you in the quiet. You're just walking through cobwebs and they're just, you don't even see them. And they're just, next thing you know, you're just covered in these intelligence operatives and these folks. And they're just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. Someone like Trump is so, must be so easy to get enticed into areas because he's, mm -hmm. he's got two two main things that he's interested in which is money and women basically there was I the mean, who wrote the thing one was it luke harding that wrote the 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 little thing about the the soviet manual for how to recruit people has like five things that you try to do and trump has all five of them like he's a 10 out of 10. Really yeah, it's, ego it's, money it's women yes. this is all of it they're yeah. like they must have been licking their chops when they saw this. that's a cia manual perfect. called mice i think that's their that's the yeah. it's not my, you know, it's not that but it's it's okay, something it's, similar it's another yeah. one yeah, I, thought of those things. Yeah. I mean, he's really easy to understand why he would have gotten lured into it. And it's for many years was really, really worth for him. I mean, there's no doubt about it that he made a fortune again and again and again and lost it only because he had um, the Russians by his side. Now, the one person who sticks out in, oh, before we leave Ivana, I should ask about this. It's interesting that you mentioned to me, Nina, that he, or at least uh, Ivana knew uh, Irisa uh, Gorbachev. Yeah, well, one of the stories I uncovered about her was that she was she was lined up to um, to translate for Raisa Gorbachev. A, I guess they were going to write a book together or something, and then an earthquake, a terrible earthquake, intervened, and Ra Raisa couldn't go forward with the project. I so can't what's remember interesting what to me about that was, is because was... you know I'm somewhat obsessed with the Epstein Maxwell story. Is that Maxwell and Gorbachev were really tight? Um, very, very, very tight. And in fact, Ivana and Jelaine were very, very tight. Um, right. so apparently they were, apparently they were running buddies. Yeah. And more than that, some Ivana of the victims of Epstein right say that she was in the car mm -hmm. when, um, you yeah. know, some, one of these victims was taken to, to a place where they were being human trafficked. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. th there's a connection there, which is kind of remarkable very early on between someone very yeah. close mm -hmm. to Donald Trump, someone very close to, to Epstein. Um, and Maxwell is still alive at that point. Right. Robert Maxwell. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that's what he's, he... he's Czech. He's Czech. He was a big, successful. That's right. Uh, person that's from right. her home country that had become this big mogul in the West, mm -hmm. um, and had the that's yacht right. and had the everything that you know that <laughs> that Mary Trump. You know the same psychology of eyes popping out. I want to be royal. This man was living literally with the royals. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he was really good friends. Walking up alongside, you know, the Queen of England, holding her umbrella, touching her, you know, jacket. Like this was Jelaine and Andrew grew up together. So he was somebody who was very well known from her country that had, that was also a KGB agent, that had made it big in the West in the way that everybody's eyes, you know, were wide for. So, of course, you know, of course, these these two are going to be friends. But think about they that. Could have, it occurs to me they could have had full conversations in Czech with Trump exactly. standing there, and Trump would have no idea what they were talking about. No idea. Yeah, and if, no, but know, his son and daughter would. Uh, uh, both. No, I think I think just Ivanka Donald. I think I think only Junior can actually fluent. speak Czech fluently. Yeah. Now, I think Ivanka, Ivanka can't. She Donnie, can't. Donnie, oh, she can. can. No, only she's too Don young. She didn't spend so. time with the uh, no. with the grandparents enough. Yeah. But we're talking oh. the late 80s here, early, like this is when he was, um, you know, Jeffrey Epstein was about to do that big thing with Hoffenberg and, and wash a lot of money through, through Towers Financial. Right. Like we're talking about Donald Trump being very close to the, the, the Epstein Maxwell saga way, way, way back in the 1980s. But so is Ivana. And Ivana is the yeah. business brain in that relationship, really. She's the one running those casinos. She's the one running the Russian mobsters in, in Atlantic City. I mean, there's a, there's a sense that she might be a very critical person in terms of understanding uh, how that money flowed out of the casinos into, because of those various money laundering 
um, uh, the fines that they had to pay. And into clearly the casinos. And into the casinos into are out of, casino. or into towers or out of Bear towers. Barns. Yeah. Yeah. Through exactly. the Bear Stearns bonds to set up these real estate deals when Ace Greenberg was doing all of that and Jeffrey Epstein was his protege as well as being Robert Maxwell's. Yeah. And Ivana is running the fucking casinos. I mean, that's <laughs> significant. No way these people aren't around one another. And mm -hmm. I think that's also why Marla Maples, who we could talk about a little bit, was yeah. such a, a thorn for Ivana is that it was the other side of the casino executives that had been brought out from Vegas, right? That she'd always battled with that hid her away in aspirin. I don't know if that's, I did see if you catch that. You didn't catch if you did that in your book, Nina, but um, so this is all, it's just the business and the sex and the, oh, it's all, it's all one thing. It's but it's so, you know, a rush it off all the way thing. back then, potentially, like this is all still yeah. an operation that we're looking uh, yeah, at today. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Marla. Yeah. There she is. She's, she was in Dancing in the Stars, the Rome edition, or the Italian edition. That's <laughs> where so I got that picture from. But, you know, Marla, Marla is, not, is not as significant a factor in, uh, in the life of Donald Trump as, as she might have been. And she really is, um, you know, she sort of got in and got out pretty quickly. Um, and, and it was not a uh, – she didn't turn it into quite this career that Ivana did. And maybe that's because of her dislike for that world or – Maybe it's because of just, uh, you know, who she was. I don't know. Maybe she was not Russian enough. What do you think, uh, Nina? Tell us a little bit more about her, about the pride of well, Kahuta, I, Georgia. She, yeah, she was very young. Uh, and she wanted, you know, very ambitious, wanted to be a model and actress. And, and um, she uh, was bold enough to get his attention and, uh, and carry, carry through with it. And um, I think that... Uh, you know, she was. She has a certain amount of grit in order to man maintain that relationship as long as she did. But um, once in, uh, she was not suited for the role that he wanted uh, to have around him. She was. She's got. You know, she's got her own spiritual Dixieland gumbo spiritual show going now, and she was already kind of leaning towards that then. And she liked to wear mom jeans and carry her baby around Mar-a-Lago in a in a what do you call it the little swedish the Bjorn. carrier <laughs> and this yeah. thanks i have had those and i'm blanking on it <laughs> and um and and that is not you know that was not what he that doesn't go with the brand and you know i think with her he he realized or started to understand that he really liked to um you know mold and um and brand women and and have have somebody pliant around him like that and and um she was not willing to go all the way down with the shoes and the, um, you know, the, the, the things that he needed her to do. She was, mm -hmm. she wasn't going to do that. And so she was resisting. Plus she had a, I guess like an affair with her, um, bodyguard or something okay. down in Miami. And, uh, and so that gave him an exit, an exit. Uh, but I also think that he already had hooked up with Melania while he was still with her. And that's, mm. that's something, I mean, that's another origin story that's very murky. It's interesting that yeah, Tiffany, sort of, get to her. Tiffany, which is um, their daughter, Marla and Donald's daughter, is, isn't is part of the that sort of inner circle of the Trump family. It doesn't appear to be, at least. She keeps herself somewhat removed. Um, is that because of Marla's doing, or has it always been, a, you know, a distant relationship for Donald? Well, he and, only and saw Tiffany. her, I mean, he, he only, he was really the ab absentee dad i mean he only saw her i think i was told three or four times in her whole life after mm. they moved to california before she went back east to college but uh but boy she's certainly you know the full she did the full-throated uh uh yell there at the rnc this uh this yeah. year so i guess she's she's you know, a fan like fully down with them yeah. yeah she's a fan she, she was one of the rich kids yeah. of instagram so let's not let's not you know oh yeah be nice to her in any way shape or form yeah, I watched Dancing with the Stars and Marla was on Dancing with the Stars and she seemed like actually kind of nice and she was all into the yoga and stuff. And she also she was a pretty good dancer, but she got voted out really, really, really quickly. I think as people hated Trump. This was four years ago in these. I think the news is watching Dancing with the Stars. 
It's great television. Who doesn't like Dancing with the Stars? Uh, it, 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 I guess. We had a phase where the whole family. We had a phase where the whole family watched it. It was really great, actually, it, for a while. It's a really fun show. show. Oh yeah, and beautiful. Yeah. The dancing is beautiful, and um, I. But it also is definitely right leaning and conservative, and, and appeals to that by the way. audience. It's um, rigged. Don't I don't want to spoil it for you, but I think it's rigged. No. I, I'm afraid so. No. no. <laughs> I, it, may, it, it may well be. Who knows? Um, let's get well, on. But, to... but I, I do, one little quick thing mm. is the other thing happening when Marla was with Donald is that Ivanka was really becoming a young woman as well. So in a lot of the photographs Ooh. of Trump with Marla going out to certain different events, he's got Ivanka with him. Mm. It's almost like she's his date because he's clinging to her as much as he's with this wife. So I don't know if you're Marla and there's this very dominant daughter sort of rising up in age, um, you know, it's like, how you, you don't want to compete with a man's daughter, right? It's just, no, you, you don't. Know. I mean, I, I don't think you do, but you it's know, the possible. relationship with Ivanka, which is all, her name is really Yvonne, Ivana as well, right? It's just that we call yes. her Ivanka because mm -hmm. she's Ivana's daughter. But yeah. the relationship there is creepy, right? I mean, it just doesn't. It's always felt like to everyone, at least, I think, to a lot of people, it's felt like it's like it's crossed every line of decency you could imagine with with with, with anybody. So um, why, you know, how did that develop, and how did it become such a an acceptable thing in that world that he was treating her in that way? that Trump was treating yeah. his daughter that yeah, way. Exactly. Um, I suppose you mean the, uh, the, I would have, if I was younger, I would be dating her and the thing is that there's those photos that just seem so like inappropriate. That. There's just this, the like, photos, a lot of yeah. treating um, her like a date. I mean, I think, you know, look, he's into the celebrity. It's, it's all about the celebrity culture and this vulgarization of, of every kind of relationship. And so, I don't actually think that they're um, that it, that it's an incest kind of thing. I mean, that's just who knows. But I, I don't think that's what it is. I think that he's, that's just how he lavished attention on her, um, and she uh, participated in it. And it, she's obviously very damaged and very well has well hidden the damage mm -hmm. of being the child of somebody like that. Um, so I, yeah, I don't. I I do think that it's. It's perverse and looking, but um, I just think it's part and parcel with the way he operates and behaves, and, and, and you know that crossing all these lines doesn't necessarily mean that he's actually, um, you know, having incest with her, no. which is what people like to say is happening. I, I, don't, I don't know think that's, that's the, what's going on. I think she's. I think she's more. Um, you know, especially after the private school education and, and all the plastic surgery. And she, she's like the perfect, she's the, she's the future of the Trump brand, the female future of the Trump brand. She is to the manor born. She's the only member of the family who's to the manor born. That's what they've wanted. And now they finally have this, this princess who speaks, you know, East Coast boarding school accent and, and has never known you know, his princess in the P and grew up on the 60th floor of a palace and never, uh, never had wanted for anything um, and really belongs to the New York, you know, the, the, I mean, there are people, the old money people sneer at her, but she's very much a part of, you know, or was uh, the rich kids scene there in New York and very your, much a your, part of it. The, ro the royalty, the 80s and the 90s, the millennial super rich Georgina Bloomberg and and uh, you know those are those are her people so I think that that's that's the that's kind of the apotheosis or you know what every everything that they ever wanted is that Donald Trump and his mother and grandmother or grandfather and whatever they had ever wanted is is in that is in that daughter um, took three, four and she, generations you know, to get if they don't her. go to jail right. I think she'll end up running for office I think the Republicans I know yeah. you know I've Somebody t today was saying, "No, Donnie Jr. is he's he he's he's the one," and I still think that they'll they'll try to groom. That, you know, she's well placed to um, if they don't if they don't all go to jail. I, I think even if he loses, she can still rise up. The way the way politics works, I think she could rise up and be uh, a candidate. So, 
I, I believe she could be. I, I think that's uh, what they're planning. She told Jared, oh, let me pull up this quote because I saw it today and I thought it was interesting that I think it came from the Mike, uh, the Wolf book. He, he He's quoting her as saying if they if the opportunity arose, she'd be the one to run for president, um, which means they've not only planned about it, they've planned out how they would deal with it um, in, that, yes. in that situation, which... No, they've been talking well, about it. Yeah. yeah. They, they've been talking about it, but <laughs> let's let's be clear here. There's probably going to be another 100,000 Americans that are killed from this failed pandemic response. Um, there are going to be, these crimes are coming out. This is it for her. She's done. She doesn't have any crimes she against her yet. That I able to have, yeah, she, she has with the charity and there'll with be charity. more. You will never be able to have the name Trump or Kushner. It's going to be doubly bad for her because of what she has allowed Jared to do. This woman is an ambitious, in my mind, this is just me, she's a sociopath. She is her father's daughter. She will climb and chew and eat her way through whatever she's got to climb and chew and eat her way through. That is who she is. And in doing so, she has hitched herself forever to two men who are going to go down for massive crimes. And massive. we could say this and every, massive and everyone be like, oh, okay, that's what we were waiting for with Mueller. I, I'm sorry, everybody. There's no way that history is going to this. And it's going to happen quick in terms of how history views what these people did. There's no way this woman is escaping that. Um, I can't remember the phrase now. It's escaped me, but the thing around her neck, right? She's, albatross, the albatross. It's not the albatross. It's the anvil. She's oh, done. okay. She it's over and that she doesn't get that, that they still think they can spin and smile and Pinterest their way out of this with clothing options <laughs> and photo shoot, you know, calling the paparazzi. She's stepping out, you know, get her today in her outfit that they think they can just sort of runway style their way through this um, mass death uh carnage is the is the epitome of the delusion of these people there's something really wrong with them it is not well, going to i work hope out you're right her. it's not going to work out for kushner and it's not going to work out for kushner's brother josh it's not going to work out for any of the people that are out here that are still coddling them right at these celebrity friends that they oh have really is mark burnett going to go down really mark burnett well, we'll goes just down sort of i do see so. we'll I, mean, is... I doubt very much I want to see every uh, single one of them go down. If that many billions of dollars, and I don't think that he goes down. I mean, I hope you're right. I think, uh, you know, the COVID, just, the, the, uh, what they've done with COVID is criminal on so many levels. And it, if it's not, um, you know, if it's not revealed now, it will be revealed eventually as the crime of the century, if not the crime of American history. Um, what they Correct. were doing there because they were putting they were putting ideology, entrepreneurial ideology and all that bullshit on top uh, uh, up up against human lives. And it's an outrage. And I hope you're right. But I still think they have, I'm right. You know, it's not just them. There are enablers. <laughs> there are enablers. There's there are enablers all over the place. That's right. There are lawyers. There are Jones well, Mark Day. Burnett there's has Jones business Day. Partners. There are lawyers who are out there, who are going to, they're, 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 they're the bulwark of this system. And that's right. It, they have to go down. They have to go down that's be, correct. before this, these people go down. And that's not an easy thing to take apart. And they all have something invested in it. So I hope they you're do. right, but I think people need to understand it's not going to be that simple that it comes crashing down. Maybe it will come crashing down on election night. Maybe, maybe so many people will come out and vote against them that it will be clear that they can't maintain but um uh, you know it's it's an edifice it's not just this mark ridiculous Burnett, family right. mark burnett's empire is going to crumble from within you heard it here it is going to crumble from within now that's different to going to jail though and i think i wasn't i was really in, interested in elliot brody's um uh, charge yesterday and, and guilty plea on on being a foreign agent for um, what's his name uh, uh, low for from one MDB. That's Elliot Brody has so many secrets, has so many secrets, and he knows exactly where they go up to. 
Yes, cheers. Yes, cheers. Yes, my, my cheers. cocktail arrived. <laughs> cheers, Elliot. Sometimes um, that happens. <laughs> but that's a big, um, that's a big, that's a big thing. I think I didn't expect Elliot Brody to go down. And if he's going down with this guilty plea that seems somewhat, a, somewhat manufactured, not manufactured, he negotiated, because he would, should be going down for a lot more. He's obviously talking about all these other crimes that he's been involved with. And they're not very far off from Donald Trump. I mean, wasn't he the chair or was he one of the chairs of Listen, the uh, inauguration committee of amongst many other things? One, yeah. That one yeah. MTB scandal is mm -hmm. tied also directly to Ivanka Trump. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. <laughs> so let's see what happens there. So we are seeing people go down, um, you know, and that's a good thing, Nina. I mean, it's, 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 we're starting to see some of that, but you think it won't go all the way to the very top. It would, you think he'll somehow be able to inoculate himself or, or uh, how will he escape? Well, I'm not going to say that. It, I'm not going to say that it's not going to go to the very top. Um, I think he's sick. I think he could literally fall over at one of these rallies. Oh. Um, but I don't. I just don't think that this. I mean, we're talking about. It's not just this family. It's mm -hmm. a lot of people who are benefiting Thanks. from it, who have, who have access to the levers of power that um it's very hard to pry their hands off of and, mm -hmm. and how you're going to get jones day law you know this t this legion of lawyers that they've got out there and the the power of the doj and the now scotus how do you pry their hands out of that even if these individuals go down these all of these people have you know i always say the this this the supreme court justice choices really don't have as much to do with Roe and overturning Roe as they do with just maintaining power against the powerless. That's what they're told to do. That's what they're yeah. picking them for, not for Roe. They don't care. They want to, they probably need to keep that on the boil. It's just this, you know, forced arbitration or making sure that BLM lands go where they want them to go. You know, it's, it, this is, it's all stuff that's going on very quietly and nobody's paying attention to it. And, um, and those are the people who are behind Donald Trump and this regime. And they are, they are witting and they're willing to go forward with it. That's, that's my fear. I hope you're right because I hope they can come crashing down. I hope they come crashing down individually one by one, but this is a system. Um, I mean, Greg, I don't know. What do you think? I'm, I throw that I out think you're both. I, just... I think you're both right. I think that, you know, the, the, the COVID thing is so awful and Kushner is absolutely responsible for it. I mean, if you, if yeah. you read Catherine Eban's reporting at Vanity Fair, he's responsible. He said Great the reporting. states have to sort it out. It's not the job of the federal government to do this um, because it's apparent. You didn't get the memo that it's not 18 fucking 40, right? And that's what Grover Cleveland said during the panic of whatever year that was. That's what Herbert Hoover said. And they were wrong. And FDR basically took that philosophy and, and threw it away forever. And Kushner, with his fancy fucking Harvard education that his father paid for, didn't learn this very basic fact. So he's in there saying the markets will fix it and this and that. Even his own friends are telling him, no, dude, we can't do it that way. The government has to do this. States are... They're, they're, they're outbidding each other for PPE. And he's like, no, 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 no. And then when it was determined that, you know, people in New York and New Jersey and California were hit hardest, he said, oh, those are blue states. Well, you know, we can blame the governors. It'll be good for us politically. That's all bad. He had a, he had a bunch of crimes before. He's involved with Khashoggi. He probably gave information to MBS that he shouldn't have given. He probably he lobbied with the Qataris to do the blockade because he wanted them to give him money, which is fucking espionage, as far as he I was understand it. Them. That was a muscle. Yeah. That was a that, mob move. That's not, yeah. that's not legal. If, if, if you take nope. U.S. policy and, and try to do that for a personal loan, that's fucking treason. You, you can go to fucking the, the chair for that as far as I understand it. So Kushner is fucked no matter what. And, and if he isn't, then the country is. There's, my point is you mm -hmm. asked, there's going to be a line. Mm -hmm. There's some people are gonna have to be sacrificed to get to where we need to be. Trump and everybody around him has to be sacrificed. Kushner's gonna be sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Manafort's gonna be sacrificed, Roger Stone. All of the people that we've known about for the last four years are gonna fall. Yeah. Mark Burnett, I don't know. I don't know that he broke any laws. He's a big fucking asshole, 
but I don't know. I mean, I don't know that he that he violated laws. I hope that LB's smirk means that uh, it's the Kushner and his princes that I, <laughs> that I would be interested in seeing. Is it, you know, will, will Kushner and Prince go down? I mean, Eric. Prince I think to me... Prince has to go. I think Prince has to go down. But he'll 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 yeah. he's in UAE. He's not coming back. But he'll get indicted or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the, it, where we go as a country depends very much on how we choose to prosecute these crimes and how far we want the circle to expand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we want to mm -hmm. actually bring mm -hmm. the country back to the people and make it a democracy again, we need to expand that circle and shut all this shit down. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to expand that widely, I you know, but it, if, if Kushner's in jail, I'll be, ha I'll be, I'll be happy about that. And oh, if oh. Kushner and Trump are both in jail, I mean, that's going to be really hard for Ivanka to run, but I, but you're right. She, she'll try. Mm -hmm. And, and these dipshit Republicans will be done. like, you know, She's done. yeah. She's yeah. Done. Who's going to vote for her? her? LB, do it's you know anything, or you're just uh, you're just surmising? Is this a prediction that you're making because you're you've got information, or is it uh, just a prediction you're making because it's it's possible? You don't have to answer that, of course. Uh, I don't have to answer that, but I will say anyone who's followed me carefully for the last four years or so um, knows exactly why I came to Twitter mm -hmm. and why mm -hmm. this whole thing started exactly what i witnessed exactly what i was privy to and who i know mm -hmm. and if you think i'm the kind of person who is going to let that bone go that i've got between my teeth then you do not know me and that's okay <laughs> <laughs> but no. uh, i don't i don't lose focus right and i don't uh you know i don't take the cards that i have for granted at all Speaking of um, MGM, which is what we really are talking about when we talk about Mark Burnett, is they have the tapes. And on Tuesday on the show, the little programming note, Tom Arnold's going to be here um, mm -hmm. to talk about oh, uh, right. those tapes and where they are and why they have not surfaced yet. These are the apprentice tapes. These are the tapes that um, that could contain a lot of st stuff about Donald Trump that he does not want out there. I'm not sure he needs any more uh, nails in his coffin right now or wants them, but he's going to probably get them when we hear about what Tom, Tom Arnold has in store. And he'll be here on Tuesday, which is great. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I don't want to leave the women because we have to get back to Melania. We have not discussed Melania. So um, why don't we do that? I don't know why you're frozen in that, uh, in that shot there. Um, so uh, tell us about Melania. Uh, okay, well, one of the, one of the uh, strange coincidences is that Melania also comes from a shoe factory town, like uh, Ivana. <laughs> it's all about the shoes. Um, <laughs> and, By the way, can well, I take I, a I moment? Book, I gotta take a there, moment, yeah. Nina. I just want to say this. You guys, this book is so much fun. I have yeah, to really say this read. now. And then I want to get, you know, but it's such a fun book. I, I, I just, I loved it. You lose yourself and in I it. Loved, it's very good to read. I loved it so much. Okay, so go ahead. Thank That's you for it. saying that. I wrote it in 40 days and 40 nights. I was oh, really? procrastinating wow. until the last minute. Yeah. It's impressive. Wow. Um, and apparently that, apparently that gave it a little, a little beat that I didn't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so she comes from a factory, okay. shoe factory town. Uh, dad is a, um, as we know uh, from um, Julia Yoffe early on, um, dad is a, uh, is a convict, a fraud, uh, is convicted of fraud. Uh, people in their town, in her, t in the little tiny town that I went to when I was researching her, uh, thought that he might have spent some time in jail, but I could never nail that down. Um, sources in Ljubljana, uh, high-level, um, prominent people, who are who were helping me um, early on, um, were shut down. Um, so people wow. they were threatened. Um, lawyers and other people threaten them. Um, this was, you know, right after the inauguration. So, uh, strange wow. uh, family, strange place. Um, and then, okay, so Melania, Melania is, uh, wow. as we know, you know, a supermodel. Um, well, she was very tall and very beautiful uh, teenager, and she um, would seem to be not particularly comfortable in front of the camera. Um, you see that in the photographs, even you see that you see that kind of in the photographs of her now. Um, she's not really comfortable with exposure, but it was at, at that time, you know, it was 89, 90, these, these women 
beauties from that part of the world were um, were commodified and commodifying themselves willingly. And she, um, you know, thought that she could make uh, make a living at this. So she went off to uh, Milan, supposedly. And then we have this lacuna in her history where she has she has basically erased herself um, from the record. There, there are very few photographs. I had a photo researcher dig up a few, but there's nothing. She was not on the catwalk. She was not a supermodel. Um, she was maybe a catalog model during those years, and those pictures don't go into the digital age. And then they lie about when they met. Supposedly, they met cute at this Victoria's Secret uh, model celebration one night and um, in, the, in 98. And, and my source uh, was a photographer on the, fo the fake lesbian pictures, uh, remembered her bragging about him, uh, her being Donald Trump's girlfriend in 96 or 95. Oh, so yeah. how they met, um, you know, I mean, I've been told certain things, but I can't nail it all down. So I'll just say that they definitely met before they say they met. Um, and maybe it's because he was still with uh, Marla that they don't want to want that to be known. Um, and what else can I tell you about her? She doesn't speak five languages. I assume that that isn't news to you. Um, and uh, sorry, I mean, my microphone is off. Sorry, I was going to ask you. Uh, yeah, you know, I think Mary Mary Jordan's Mary Jordan, the Washington Post uh, reporter, confirmed a lot of the stuff that I had been finding, but went much deeper because she focused on her only for three years, mm. and um, you know, really, is, she really is someone who has um, erased deliberately erased her past and is willing to to create it in a you know to rewrite it um, with Donald, and and that is. You know that is one of the attributes of again the you know these these dictator families. I mean they just you know dispense with the truth, um, and there's no reason for you to know anything anything about them other than the story that they're making up that they're telling. So she's gone to great lengths to hide her her real story, and um, I think that she wasn't someone who was terribly interested in world affairs. Let's just put it that way as a young person, not somebody who was cur super curious. I think she just really wanted luxury and likes the sound of pearls and diamonds clacking against the marble in the bathroom. Does she speak and, six languages? And that's the person that she is. <laughs> oh, I said she doesn't speak six. She doesn't, yeah, she doesn't speak yeah. Slovenian. Um, and you so, know that she, she spent all of her time in the family, in the Slovenian family bubble. Yeah, I mean, she right. brought her parents over and Trump gave them an apartment. She lived downstairs with them most of the time. And that's why in the 2016 still does. campaign, it's... she could barely speak English because she'd spent all of that time during their marriage yeah. downstairs with the family. And Baron was speaking Slovenian as well. She lived in a Slovenian bubble, basically. And they, she still lives with them. She's still, in, even though she's the first lady, she's still living with them in their house in the Potomac, which, I mean, that sounds really interesting that she has that kind of private time away from from the White House, because we don't know what she's up to necessarily. And she does uh, have a very good relationship with, with Putin. Um, we've certainly seen them in public. Uh, they, they get along well with each other. And um, I'm sure that's that doesn't seem common for her to have that sort of ease that she has with Putin um, as, she, as, she, as she does. So, you know, I'm very suspicious of what she's up to when she's not at the White House, um, because, you know, you know she, she does. She, if you were going to have a handler, that would be the handler. Hypothetically. I, I yes, we I were think it, you know. Go on out, go, Greg. Oh, I was going to say, LB and I were talking about this or texting about this earlier today. Like, my 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 idea about her is that she's just sort of exactly what she appears to be, which is, as you wrote in the book, mm -hmm. shy. She doesn't like attention. She likes to have a small circle. She doesn't like to go out. She doesn't like to drink. She doesn't like to party. She likes to be taken mm -hmm. care of, and that's basically it. When I uh, four years ago on my site, The Weaklings, one of one of the co-writers there wrote a piece analyzing all of the Instagram photos that she had taken and came to that conclusion that that is in Nina's book, which is she's shy. She doesn't like to go out. She creates her own little world. She's in her own little bubble. And I don't know that it's anything deeper than that with her. That's that's mm -hmm. I, I don't know that there's anything there. I, I think she's nice to Putin because Trump wants her to be. 
you know, maybe. And, okay. you know, and can she is, even speak Russian? Where, I don't know. This is where I, I, I can, for me, to me, she's a very dangerous player. Um, she, she is a hanger, literal walking hanger for propaganda. Mm-hmm. She's going on when she did her speech at the at the RNC propaganda event at the White House, where we were also appalled that our house was used for that. She's mm-hmm. wearing her communist Stalinist, mm-hmm. you know, costume uniform. And if you so she's always projecting that imaging. It's like she's doing that for Putin. She's doing that for that troll. She's trolling us mm-hmm. all the time. She's straight out of 4chan fantasy land. Um, if with Putin's hand on it, they're laughing at us because of her. She speaks in the Slavic accent. We could barely speak English. This is going to be so fucking embarrassing mm-hmm. for every American. And they know it as soon as the truth really, truly comes out. And we know it's coming about Donald and how owned he is by and how long and how deep he's been in there with Kremlin when it, back when it was a Soviet Union. And they never let their grip go on this motherfucker. And here's this. Slavic woman who's standing up there basically saying moose and squirrel to at us, right? And, and, and Americans are so fucking dumb that they don't, you know, they, and if people who don't know what that reference is, that's a reference to the old Bullwinker cartoons of the Natasha, the Boris and Natasha were the Russian spies that nobody could figure out were Russian spies, right? And all she said was, oh, moose and squirrel, moose and squirrel, because of Rocky and Bullwinkle after them. That's what she is. It's a joke. They're trolling us with this woman and it's disgusting and it's appalling and it's embarrassing. And America is going to be really embarrassed because of her. And she knows it and she revels in cruelty and she bitches and moans on those Stephanie tapes or Wolkoff tapes that came out. Mm -hmm. Right. We hear who she really is. We knew she was a birther. And now we can hear that she's saying things like fucking Christmas and fucking people. She is an elitist of the elitist. She looks down on all Americans while she's dressing herself to please Vladimir Putin. Fuck her. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not saying not fuck her. I'm saying the two things can be, they, they could be the same. I don't know. I just, I, I, just I, don't, I don't think she's that smart. I don't think she's that. I don't think she's that smart either. And I'm with you on that, Greg, but I do, I, I hear, I see what you're saying. Um, I think she, she's black hearted. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. the, uh, the way that she stepped on people to get where she was wanted to be. That's um, right. But I think single-minded, de- single-minded devotion to get into, a um, you know, just to have luxury around you and to have, um, you know, I don't think that it's anything beyond that. I mean, but I do think again, these wives in, in theory are somebody could be calling her up and saying, where is the nuclear briefcase mm-hmm. or how does he feel today? Right. Those and once you're a KGB right. agent, you're she always be, a KGB agent, right? I mean, you don't it's get to leave. Dangerous. <laughs> this is very dangerous. This mm. is not, this is not just, oh, she's pretty. She looks nice and she's dumb and it doesn't matter because she's vapid and she's just going to find out that she can't walk away with as much money as she wants. Although that's one of the, that's one of the roles that Mark Burnett to come back to him has played in this whole thing for her. But it, it's, dangerous to have this kind of propaganda going on. It's dangerous to have somebody like this with their hooks into this man's daily fucking life. This is our first lady. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, everybody. And to remind everyone, there is a Jeffrey Epstein connection here too, because he claimed to introduce That's them. That's right. Uh, for now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's- And it's possible. It's very, very possible. Because so, that's you know, murky. How they met is murky. I can't imagine Putin would have let this guy go. The, KGB or the FSB or whoever would have let Donald Trump just free, we, you know, let loose to go find his own uh, freelance uh, wife or girlfriend. They would have sent him someone um, to stay close to him. I mean, they, why would they? Why would they not? And she does. She does appear to have come from from that part of the world. Um, now she. There's this moment from the. I think it was their uh, DNC thing, where uh, Ivanka walks past, and I guess she must have said something to. <laughs> Melania, that was not very nice because that look is a bit, it's not very friendly. What's what's their relationship like? Do you have a sense of what their relationship is like? Yeah, they're in competition with each other for his respect mm. and, and and attention. His mm-hmm. attention, really, because they're never going to get his respect. They're they're in competition for his attention. Right. And um, I think that when 
she wore the I don't care do you jacket. Um, I think it was direct. She plays to a small stage. I don't think she's on the world stage. She plays to the small, small group of people. I think she was directing it at Ivanka. I mean, they do, you know, it's, it's satire almost. I mean, they, 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 they argue over who got to go to Africa first or who would get to hold the black baby in the, in the photo op. And, um, you know, they're, they're just, um, and, you know, she, she's, she's got his attention more than Ivanka, but he pays attention to Ivanka and he, he respects Ivanka probably more than he respects her in some way. So I think there's a, you know, stepmother, stepdaughter, um, competition. Mm -hmm. So well, interesting. he needs Friction. Melania now. He doesn't they don't get really, along. Yeah. For, for his imaging as, as president for this role that he's playing this this thing he's producing of himself as president, uh, he needs Melania. He doesn't need Ivanka for that. You know, maybe that's he true. He absolutely yeah. does need her. That's and yeah, that, that is that. the bottom line on Melania. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the bottom line is that she, you know, with, with always with young women marrying these old coots in the beginning, the man holds all the power, <laughs> but by the end, the women are running the show and he needs her. He, she, he, he can't, she can't walk away. So, so she has, it's always has the third wife. <laughs> It's so interesting. Wow. Um, and, any other thoughts for anyone running out of time? But, uh, Watch out for the third yeah. wife with, the, with these guys. <laughs> I just want to say I, I'm looking forward to the to part two of this episode when we just talk about what most of the book was about, which is Tiffany. So that'll be good. <laughs> yes, let's. I'll be back for that. Did anyone online have any questions? Was anyone asking about? Uh... I, I was looking. They're mostly commenting. Um, okay. um, uh, uh, there is a question. That is an interesting one because it has been floated by people who had interaction with the family and by Melania. And I don't know if you came across any of this, Nina, but that Melania ha as well has a substance abuse problem. So there's mm. someone, you know, did, did you ever get anything around any of that? Well, I mean, there's, a, there is, a, you know, we, we dug up one of the photo researcher dug up a picture of her in, in full, um, heroin chic, um, in the full heroin chic look with dark circles under her eyes dragging uh, down the somewhere um in i guess in your photo um, shoot you or? know it was the that they were yeah i mean i can send you i i've posted the picture actually on my on my um twitter feed before i'll put it back up mm -hmm. but um but yeah i mean you do hear you do hear things like that the rumors um you know noel castler has gone on the record about it um you know claiming that ivanka called her the junkie wife or something um yeah and i think it's uh, i think it's I heard always that from someone I else know. i mean she, well yeah that i mean it's 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 a, yeah. the rumors those are rumors but i wouldn't i there i haven't verified them and i wouldn't right. i wouldn't say that they're true because i have no way of knowing um but there you know there are you hear those things yeah what about her kidney surgery? That's interesting. What was that? The what kidney was surgery. That? I, I mean, I have a theory on that. Maybe she did have a problem. I don't know. I mean, you read the. You know, I have to go. Mary Jordan's book. Uh, you know, she did. She, again, she spent three years on her, and I was out of it by the by 2018. I wasn't on. It wasn't digging in there anymore. I mean, she was. She, the disappearance supposedly had to do with a kidney uh, a surgery that went badly or that did not that should have been a three-day operation but was much more serious okay that's what they've said um you also heard that she had you know her mother was sick and that she had to put in time with her mother um who knows hmm. um i don't know 24 days that she was gone for right or something like that it's a good chunk of time um well thanks so much for joining us nina what a great hour and a bit so yeah. Uh, this is the book, The Trump Women, Part of the Deal. It's really, really a fun read. And I haven't got all the way through it, I must it's confess, really but good. but it's really, really fantastic. And it's a, it just puts you in a, in a whole new world and it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, and it's available yeah. everywhere, anywhere you get your books online. And it's also, there's a Kindle edition as well. And a, is there an audio book? I'm not sure if there is. A, yeah, there yes. is, okay. Awesome. So, uh, so pick that up and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday with uh, Tom Arnold, which will be fun. Until then... Uh, have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time.
Good night, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for having me. Thank you. on Narrative Live, but we have partnered with AdvertiseCast to handle our advertising and sponsorship requests. They're great to work with, and they'll help you advertise on our show. Please email sales at advertisecast.com or visit our show notes page. You'll find that in your podcast player where we describe what's on this week's show.